Namaskar. Uh, I will talk about charisma. What is charisma? Charisma is the Greek word. It means gift freely given, like a gift of God. So the person who has charisma believed to be a person chosen by God. If you have a charisma, it's a special grace of God for you to do something in the world, to achieve some mission. Uh, so I also believe in that, that it is a gift of God. It's not just something you can imitate or generate. Of course, in our analytical age, you can break down charisma in, into elements and you can work on those elements and you can improve your charisma. But there is something true also about the charisma being a connection with the divine. <laughs> I will explain later. You watch a little bit, have some patience and watch until I explain that. So charisma is very important. For leaders, it's very important, indispensable. Leader without charisma is just like a singer without the voice. It's the most important instrument. But also in normal life, in family life also, we want to be respected. We want to be listened to. We want to be cooperated with. Like if person doesn't cooperate with me, doesn't follow me or doesn't walk with me, doesn't want to be friend with me, it's very frustrating. And it is also very ineffective. If I want to achieve some results, some goal, uh, the bigger the goal, the more people need to be involved with. All the great projects, they are realized, they are materialized by the cooperation of so many people. So the bigger charisma you have, the, the more chance you have to, uh, to have a cooperation with people and the more chance you have to achieve success. So if you break down, if, you, if we become analytical now, then what charisma? Uh, it's number one is some special power. You have some special power that I don't have. You have, I don't have. So I am attracted to you because by connection with you, maybe I get a little bit of your power. <laughs> Another element is friendliness, warmth. I understand that if you, have, you are very powerful, but you are very cold and unfriendly, I think maybe there is very little chance that I will get it from you. <laughs> so I'm not so much attracted to you. I'm so, I don't want so much to cooperate with you. I don't know, maybe you have power, but you are not uh, well disposed towards me and I will get nothing from that. So warmth, power, and uh, one time, and legitimacy <laughs> this legitimacy is so very important one time we were after meditation with my friend and then suddenly he he asked he, he likes to ask me this kind of questions suddenly after meditation he said dada what is charisma all about and i i didn't think much i said charisma is all about higher purpose. Charisma is all about serving the higher purpose. And then I say that I knew it is true, but I didn't understand why it is like that. You become magnetic. You become attractive once you serve the higher purpose. Because from higher purpose, you get legitimacy. You know what is legitimacy? Like a king, the son of the king, the prince, becomes another king. He says, by, my, uh, by God's will and my own right, I am the king of so-and-so. <laughs> That's my right, by hereditary rule, rule. From my, I'm inheriting that right from my father, from my mother, from my family, from my lineage, that lineage that has been ruling the country for hundreds of years, that is my right. That's how I inherit. <laughs> so today is different. Today we, we live mostly, most of the world lives in democratic countries. So the leader gets legitimacy from the power comes from the people. The people gives him the right to rule. So that's also legitimacy. Sometimes even the revolutionaries they become legitimate. They are completely illegitimate. 
they're supposed to be like usurpers. You, you usurp the power. And that is opposite of legitimation, le legitimacy. But they're still legitimate. Why? Because they're serving the higher purpose. The purpose which is shared, with, shared by so many people, if I start to serve that purpose, from that purpose, I get the right. <laughs> and people will sense it. So this is very important. And uh, in the yogic path, this is also very, very important. Uh, you become legitimate as a disciple. You must get legitimacy from your teacher. There is this legitimacy, there is a usurper, and there is self-proclaimed person. Self-proclaimed, I want something. I want to be called a doctor. But I don't want to go to university. I don't want to, to study. So I will say, Dr. Dada Sadananda. <laughs> but it's not true. I didn't study in a medical university. So I will be self-proclaimed in that situation, in that sense. And to be a real doctor, I need to be recognized. By who? By my teachers. My teachers have to recognize me, not me. My teachers have to say, yes, he is a doctor. So, uh, yeah, like in the, in the medieval Europe, there was the system of master and uh, kind of under the master. You know, the person who is studying under the master, he is apprentice, yeah, master and apprentice. So, the apprentice is there serving the master, helping doing different tasks, simple tasks, then more difficult tasks, more complicated tasks. And then finally, there is a day when he needs to be recognized as a master. And then that apprentice has to produce something which is called a masterpiece. A masterpiece. If he has produced that masterpiece and his master's master is seeing that masterpiece, it's like, yeah, now my son, you are the master also. Now we are not anymore master and apprentice. You are, I'm a master and you are the master also. <laughs> so this is very, very nice. I like this very much. The, the recognition of the teachers. I remember in my life, there was this one incident. I always had this very deep thirst for spiritual knowledge. Even I learned English just because I wanted to read what is there in the, in the spiritual book. And it was not available in my language. So such deep thirst I had. For, for knowledge. So I, I studied as much as what I, <laughs> what I could get, I studied that one. Uh, and at one point, I got in my hands one book, which I was not supposed to read. That was only for acharis or spiritual teachers, qualified spiritual teachers. And that was kind of secret book. And my dad had it, my teacher had it. So he was not in the town. And I found this book and I was like, almost like, <laughs> no, my body is just like, <sighs> I'm shaking. I really want to read what is there. I really want to read what's there. Then I opened that book. I start to read. I read one page. I become really so interested. I become really so fascinated. I really want to read it. <sighs> and then, but then my body starts to give me this signal. My blood pressure starts to rise. My heart palpitates, I start to have headache, and I'm feeling like, yeah, maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Then I close the book. Then I, there is this big temptation. <laughs> I want to read it. <laughs> so then I thought, then, and then I told to myself, I want to read this book, but I want to read it when I have right to read it. When I earned the right to read this book, I will read it. Then I decided, I am going to read this book <laughs> when my time will, ripe, will be ripe. So after, maybe I think after, 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 after like seven years, I got this book as my own. <laughs> and then I felt so satisfied that I earned it. So this inner confidence comes not when you grab it, not when you steal it, because you, you still don't own it. But when you really earned it, you re and then you are recognized by the masters also. 
there is this one I like this whole aesthetics of Star Wars franchise so there is one uh, movie in YouTube is called uh, Star Wars Apprentice and there is this Darth Maul he is the follower of the dark side of the force and then you know how they are they are very you know cruel and very you know very strong and very powerful so uh, in that philosophy of the dark side you should have no mercy no compassion so then he goes through that kind of test so then he slays all the jedi and all the all the enemies and then finally he has the moment of doubt and compassion and then finally he overcomes and then he you know establishes himself in the dark side of the force and then there is this uh, his teacher appears i like that moment very much uh, doesn't matter dark side or light side that moment is so nice his teacher appears and then he said uh, you are truly powerful no mercy no compassion binds you <laughs> you are the beginning of the end of all jedi Darth Maul, your training is complete. <laughs> and then this uh, character, Darth Maul, the whole movie, he's just saying one word, one sentence, so beautifully. He says, yes, my master. <laughs> I love it. I really love it. It's so nice. Yes, my master. It is that I earned my legitimacy. It's not like I'm nobody. I have become recognized by my master. I had a moment also in my life like that. Little bit similar. Few moments, <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, one time we were in training center. We were in training to become monks, to become uh, teachers of meditation. And it was very, very tough. It was... Discipline is harsh internal processes are completely met you know inside of you there is this big revolution going on big transformation going on by the way if you want to really experience transformation if you really want to enjoy very deep meditation and very big restructuring of your mind come to our yoga monastery our yoga monastery is very very powerful place so when i came there Three days I was like completely blissful and then inner transformation started and there was a lot of struggle, lots of inner fight inside of me. But then I was struggling, struggling, struggling and one day we were sitting after collective meditation and our teacher, our trainer, he was announcing, he said, you know, you came here for transformation, you came here for inner purification, you came here to gain insight into spirituality and to become acharyas, to become spiritual teachers. And, and then the training is going on, but I must announce that three of our brothers, their training is complete. And he calls the names. Such and such, such and such, that he calls my name. And I feel like, wow, there is immediately all the inner struggle, everything disappeared and I just become blissful. He said, now, they are not trainees anymore, they are dadas. <laughs> Recognize them like that. Wow, that was powerful. <laughs> and then I remember in India, there was also struggle, 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 until the last day, there was inner fight. Then somehow, I figured out in my mind, I come to peace in my mind. And then after the harmony was established within myself, then one senior teacher came and he said, okay, now you are ready. Tomorrow you are going to give your oaths, your vows. And I'm just like, wow, <laughs> just, just now I have become ready and already the vows are coming. So we entered into the room, entered inside the room. There was this picture of our guru and this senior teacher of meditation named Acharya Nirmohananda Vadut. So he said, okay, now the place your hand on the picture, repeat after me, repeat your vows. I repeated, I really felt so happy to repeat it because that wow is so beautiful. I really want to fulfill it <laughs> in my life. So then when I was saying this aloud, I'm really feeling that, okay, now I'm being recognized by the guru, <laughs> by the cosmic force I'm being recognized now. So I cannot hold my emotions. I cry like anything. 
so much tears, I'm crying and crying and crying. And then this dad is so sweet, you know, very, very senior, very elderly, very respected. Then he comes to me, he takes my like this, my head like this, by my cheeks, he removes my tears like this. And he said, Dada, why are you crying? You just have become Acharya. <laughs> even more cry. <laughs> I cry even more. Such a nice moment, I tell you. To be recognized by your seniors. To be recognized. And that moment, I really, I felt not only seniors. I'm recognized by God at that moment. The purpose I have dedicated my life to. I submitted my life to serve that purpose. <laughs> I have given my life to serve meditation practice, to serve dharma, to serve the supreme ideology, <laughs> the supreme ideology. Now I am being recognized by that ideology. What can be higher than that? <laughs> so this is such a beautiful moment. That's why, you know, there are many people, they deny the, themselves this moment of legitimacy. They deny themselves this moment of charisma. They say, I don't belong to any religion. I don't belong to any teacher. I don't belong to any uh, traditions. I pick up whatever is best for me. <laughs> I take it from everywhere. I don't want to be confined by any traditions, by any philosophy, by anything. Okay, sounds good. But if you don't recognize a teacher, you will never be recognized by the teacher. You deny yourself this <laughs> very important moment. And through the teacher, succession of the teachers, there is a direct link to God. That's how it works. Basically, you're not recognized by God. <laughs> also meditation, you know, when you do meditation, you establish direct link with God. It's also very important through, through your parents. Recognition of the parents, the blessings of the parents is so important. Mother, blessings, very important. Father, blessings, very important. Because that is the link to God. And the teachers, it is the link to God. But also there is a direct link with God. And that's your meditation. So in meditation, the God animates you brings you into motion, into your inspiration, and you are gaining the legitimacy, you're gaining the power directly from him. So that's why it's so important to meditate also. Yeah. So important to recognize your parents. Doesn't matter whether in your mind they were good or bad to you. You recognize your roots and be recognized by your roots. <laughs> You hold the wall, as long as you hold the world, you touch the world, the world touches you. The moment you remove your hand, the world doesn't touch you anymore, doesn't recognize you anymore. The moment you recognize your guru, your spiritual teacher, spiritual teacher recognizes you. Actually, I put in the word guru in much higher sense. Actually, for me, guru is not only the spiritual teacher, the physical embodiment of the spiritual teacher. For me, guru is divine consciousness so by recognizing by following that by following the conduct rules by following the uh, the lineage you recognize the teacher and you are being recognized by the teacher <laughs> you cannot imagine what kind of power you gain from that the inner feeling the inner shakti inner strength so this is very very powerful <laughs> so one of the elements of charisma is really to serve, to serve, to serve humanity and be recognized by humanity. To serve your guru, your spiritual teacher, be recognized by your spiritual teacher. To serve to God, be recognized by God. <laughs> and from that, become powerful, become charismatic. Yeah. And for me in my life, these are really the highlight moments, such a sweet moments of my life. <laughs> the moments of connection and it's like you know ego 
I want and I don't want, I like, I dislike. It likes to stay in its comfort and it likes to get what it wants. So if you follow the ego, you will become usurper or self-proclaimed because you want immediately everything. You don't want to deserve. It was very interesting. My also teacher, one of the teachers, I was saying something, something negative maybe I was saying. And then he just very sharply, he cut me like this. He said, deserve, do not desire. And I'm like, oh, oh. I feel, at, at, at first I felt like he cut my hands like this, <laughs> my legs. <laughs> deserve, do not desire. I was just like, wow, what is this? I was hurt in my heart. I felt pain. But then I start to think about it. And it was so beautiful. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Deserve, do not desire. When you deserve, things come to you. When you desire, you become self-proclaimed. You become usurper because you desire. You want to get immediately. You're not deserving. So one of the definitions of Santosha, yogic principle, is called be happy, be content with what comes to you without requests from you. <laughs> You don't have to desire, you don't have to request. Whatever comes your way, be happy with that. It means what you have deserved, you are gaining it. And in that, there is such a great harmony. Once you become grateful for what life gives you, life gives you so much more. <laughs> Once you recognize even the small gifts of life, oh, the life recognizes you and wants to bestow more and more on you. If you don't recognize, you say, oh, I'm getting so little, I'm so unhappy, then uh, you will not be recognized by God also. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, you, you're not happy, be unhappy. <laughs> That's your, your decisions. <laughs> so it's by bowing the head of the ego and by bringing yourself in harmony with higher purpose, you really achieve charisma and legitimacy. So thank you very much. Please write in the comments what you think about it and in your opinion what is necessary to become charismatic and do you really agree with me that charisma comes from serving a higher power thank you very much namaskar <laughs>